If you own an e-commerce brand and you need to run Facebook ads, here's exactly how to do it. I've been running ads for eight years. I ran ads for huge companies, created ads for big brands, and this is exactly what I've learned from them and what I see in the ad accounts every day to signal what's winning and how to make an ad win. Now, I can't guarantee doing all of this is going to make a winning ad. There's a lot of variables that come into play with this, but if you focus on these few things, you're going to have a much higher chance of finding a winning creative and scaling your brand. I've seen one ad scale a brand from zero to millions a year. If you find one amazing angle that resonates with your consumer and educates them on the brand, you can fully scale your company. You, you really only need a few great ads to get to that point. And then you have to, of course, iterate based off that. But this is exactly how you can start to make winning ads. The first thing you need to do is that you need to target broad. A lot of the targeting that you're doing doesn't mean anything. When iOS 14 came out, it made it very hard for the platforms to track properly and understand the audience. So you could just choose gender. If you're selling a men's t-shirt, target men. If you're selling cosmetics, target female and age, right? So if you're targeting mothers, I would target, you know, typically over 30 around that. So you could target age and you could target gender, but that's all you really need to do. Target broad and Facebook will do the work for you. The algorithm is so smart now, and you're probably not going to outsmart the algorithm. Trust Facebook and focus on creatives. Which leads me to my next point. You need to be focusing on the clicks. The click of the ad gets you to the landing page. I'm not gonna talk about the landing page right now, that's a separate video. Your landing page should be optimized. It should explain price, bundle deals, and just the, the entire product. It should explain the product very simple and easily and explain the pain points. Your ad's job and the only job is to get people to click and then go to your website. Your ad needs to be so captivating and educational and understand the user's pain points that they should click and then go to your website. The more clicks you have, the more chances you have at people buying your product. So if you focus on the clicks and make it catchy, your product should sell. Now it won't fix a bad product or a bad landing page, but if you have an amazing ad, an amazing landing page, and an amazing product, everything should flow down the funnel and should work very well. But starting just at the ad at the ad level, focus on getting the clicks. Make things look very creative. Scroll on your feeds on shorts, reels, TikTok and see what stands out to you. Try to replicate that. Look at videos that have very high watch time and a lot of likes and engagement and see what they're doing. Is it oddly satisfying? How does it look? Try to apply that to your ads. Not everything, high quality ads and ads that are filmed on a, on a very high quality camera don't always work. Users are very used to seeing this. They're used to seeing commercials and very high produced ads and it doesn't resonate with them anymore. They're used to seeing UGC, you know, content that's just filmed on an iPhone, filmed very basic so that it looks like a friend sent it to them. It needs to look very organic for someone to even watch it and then hopefully engage with it. So just remember that when you're filming your ads. The next thing to do is to iterate based off of what's working. I don't see a lot of brands find something that works, whether it's an angle or a talent or even a script, and they just forget it and they try to film something new and reinvent the wheel every time. Just how everyone says don't reinvent the wheel. Once you have a winning ad or you have a winning talent, script, angle, whatever it is, iterate and drill that into the ground. For example, let's say one male talent is working amazingly. I highly suggest you pay that talent more and take care of them and continue to get them to film in other locations with similar scripts and similar angles so you can continue to make winning ads. If your script is working, have a bunch of different talent lined up so that you can refilm that script and make more winners. It might not work, it might work a little bit less, but it's just worth it on everything that's working. A lot of brands are just trying to make new creatives every single week or month and it doesn't make any progress in the ad account because the consumer is resonating with this one angle or talent and everything new is not going to get spend or become a new winner because it is something fully different. So if you have an amazing setting, script, talent, whatever it is about the winner, test all of those variables in a new way to find a new winner and basically iterate on that constantly. It does take time, but of course it is worth it. The next thing is copywriting. Your script needs to be so interesting and understand the consumer's pain point that people want to watch it. It needs to be filmed how you want to watch something, how you consume your content. The script and the copywriting of the ad really lure the consumer in. If your script is extremely boring and you get to the point after 10 seconds, no one cares at that point. You have a few seconds to capture the attention. You need to educate immediately example if you're selling a shampoo that has very natural products in it natural chemicals and there's no long laundry list of chemicals that no one can pronounce I would definitely take that angle 
and stick with either hair loss or healthy scalp, oily scalp, and just understand what the consumer is going through to try to resonate. You're going to need to talk about these pain points within the first five seconds to really get somebody to pay attention. If you're talking about, example, itchy scalp, you need to mention, oh my, I've been having an itchy scalp for years. This is the only thing that worked for me and then go into problem solution. If you don't mention that and say, I've been using a shampoo for so long and it never worked for me. I've tried so many things. I finally found this shampoo that worked. I have already lost interest. And at 10 seconds or even further down the line, the person has scrolled at that point. You've fully lost their attention. You have three to five seconds max to explain your product and how it's going to solve their problem. Everyone has problems, obviously. If you can solve their problem or at least educate them on how you can solve this problem within seconds, you pretty much have them on the hook. You have their attention. Then the rest of the video's job is to just educate on why your product is better than the competitors. Very few people are doing this. I see scripts and ads all the time where maybe at the 20 to 30 second mark, the product is introduced. I don't know who is waiting 20 to 30 seconds. Every Everyone's scrolling on TikTok within five seconds. Look at video one, two, three, four, five, scroll. Like I probably just kind of way fast and five seconds just there. A few seconds and I'm scrolling. I don't even sometimes wait a second. If it's not oddly satisfying or as an amazing hook, I'm out. And I'm sure you, you feel the same way. So the copywriting and the script need to fully resonate with the consumer, make total sense, use regular words, don't use any big words. It should be able to be understood by a five-year-old and you should push this out and have talent read that type of script. Use very small words and understand what you're selling. Go for one angle at a time. The next thing I can't stress enough, honestly, is always be filming. ABF, if you want to put an acronym on it. I don't know what that means. If I Google it, it's a bad thing. Hopefully it's not. Always be filming. The reason for this is that you can never have enough footage. Your editors or yourself, you can never have too much B-roll or too much talent talking about your product. You can make a combo UDC. You can put a bunch of talents together. You could do a B-roll UDC. You could have a bunch of B-roll stacked together with captions and just explain the product. There are so many things you can do with so much content. You never have enough content. Similar to how music artists can never put a music fast enough. I see artists releasing a new song every week. People just want more constantly. YouTubers post once a week, sometimes twice a week. The consumer wants more all the time. As soon as they see something that, that they've seen before, they're already over it and they've scrolled. They've lost interest because they saw it. It's nothing new. If you make new content constantly and you're cycling it in once every week, two weeks, even once a month if you're not spending that much, people will see it as a new piece of content. They'll understand it, hopefully digest it, and then hopefully, probably click on that as opposed to the thing that's burned out at that point. The reason to always be filming is because you, of course, have never have enough content. You can use this for ads. If a talent forgets to get B-roll, you can cycle this in. You can create so many ads with all of this content. You can post it on your organic social, make TikToks, put it in ads. There's just never enough content. I mean, we film B-roll all the time to include in ads. For example, if you use new B-roll and a concept that's winning, I'll give you a little tip here. If you have a winning ad and you use new B-roll, you cycle new B-roll in and you ditch the old B-roll, it's going to look like an entirely new concept and it could grab attention that it's never grabbed before or it could just re-spark the entire ad's performance. Cycle in new B-roll, cycle in new talents, always be filming. You should always have talent or creators filming with your product because you cannot test fast enough. If you test even 10, 20 bucks a day, 100 bucks a day, or even more if you're at a higher level, you will understand if an ad dies or burns out or it's not going to work extremely fast with Facebook's algorithm. It is so smart that it will basically tell you if an ad is going to work or not within a few dollars spent of running that ad and testing that ad. That is why you should always be filming. You should be paying attention to the clicks and your script should be fully optimized for the consumer to understand their pain points and how you're going to solve their problem. This is exactly the blueprint of how you should be making your Facebook ads and pretty much running them with the broad audience. And this should help you find winners and scale your brand. I really hope you subscribe, like the video, comment, toss me a comment. I really appreciate that. Send it to a friend. Why not? Thank you so much. I'll make more marketing videos.